10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, Hey everyone, this is Siddharth Kumar and welcome to Review Magic. So today what we're going to be doing is we will be focusing on documentary review of this new show which is available on Netflix. It's called Return to Space. It just got released this year and it's available on Netflix. Now this show primarily features Elon Musk in it. As I was going through what I wanted to see on Netflix, this came to my attention and I think Elon Musk is in the news for so many different reasons. I just had that curiosity that what exactly is Return to Space all about? And I know that Elon has done a lot of work around uh, his SpaceX company as well as space exploration program. So I said, all right, let me just jump into it. So, so Return to Space is two hours, eight minutes. It is a core documentary that has been directed by Jimmy Chin and Elizabeth Chai, their husband, wife. This is a real show. So however, if I have to pick people who are main protagonists in this show, it has to be Elon Musk. There are two American astronauts, Bob Benkin and Douglas. Hurley. So Return to Space is all about the partnership between SpaceX and NASA. So NASA is the government agency that oversees all these missions to International Space Station and SpaceX is a private company. So for a long period of time, astronauts have not been sent into the uh, International Space Station, space exploration, research in general, to the moon, Mars. These are very expensive programs have cost billions of dollars for uh, NASA. So it really is is a collaboration between now a private company SpaceX which is owned by Elon Musk and he is going to now send American astronauts in his rocket to the space station to the moon and eventually to Mars. I was pretty interested in understanding you know how this thing unfolds. You get to really see two things in the movie. You know the first thing is the accomplishment of humanity. How humans are eventually able to go to International Space Station and you know what they want to do in the future. The second thing you want to see in this uh, show is perseverance and entrepreneurship of a leader like Elon Musk. This guy is tenacious and he's going to do anything and everything to make sure that people are now going to uh, moon and Mars and you know make different planets their home. So these two things are the main thing that you're going to see in the Return to Space documentary. The show really starts at you know there's an aerial shot of you know a rocket that's standing and this is how you expect you know the aerial shots are beautiful you know they are from large distance they are from close-ups and you know you can see these giant rockets you know I don't know 100 feet uh, tall and you know people are sitting there there are close-ups inside so when it comes to the shots overall you know close-ups you know it's a real show so you see people talking people you know observing things uh, in an operation center which is kind of the area where you manage all your communications with these uh, astronauts that are going as I was watching the show show maybe 20 minutes inside or maybe an hour it really got me excited about the space program if someone today asked me do you see yourself on mars on moon i would say no but after watching this show it builds into you that curiosity that yes it is possible it definitely someday will come where humans are going to be into different planets and i at least got excited i don't know if i want to travel right now but you know at least i would want to explore or research more about you know what life is all about in those planets so it really kicks you very well. The flow is beautiful. It goes into flashbacks. It connects the dots pretty well. So I thought Jimmy Chin and Elizabeth Chai did a very good job, especially to engage someone's interest. And guys, if you know, you know, I do reviews on a lot of different topics, whether it is, you know, different cultures. Documentary has been, you know, my new forte. But to gauge my interest into a space program, which I thought was boring, was monotonous, these guys have made it look beautiful. That's the word that comes to my mind. There's a lot of technical details that is shown into this uh, documentary. Now, you know, I talked about the operation center where everyone is sitting there. These are giant screens, computers, everything is there. They talk about things which, you know, uh, really give you new insights as to what's going on. So there is a scene where they want to launch two of these astronauts that I just talked about. It doesn't go. The reason behind it is the weather is not cooperating. So there is some guy whose say matters so much that the entire program, which is between NASA 
NASA and SpaceX that goes on hold. So a lot of things also come out and you, you really become curious. It's not about put people and send them. It's they've touched on every different aspect of, you know, what it takes into uh, sending people. So Elon Musk, as you know, he was a millionaire from his PayPal days. And, you know, now he owns Tesla, Solar City, and now he's ventured into SpaceX where he wants to launch people. He just feels there is a vacuum, there is a need, and he has to do that. Doing it in a very cost-effective way, being able to reuse the rockets, which used to be very expensive for NASA. So now they have done a joint partnership, which was not easy. You know, although NASA spent $350 billion over the last 60 to 70 years, and they've spent $1 billion on every astronaut that has gone, the cost just keeps going. So, you know, they had to stop the shuttle program to send astronauts into the uh, space. In spite of that, I mean, it's not like they immediately were approving Elon Musk's SpaceX. Elon Musk had a very hard time. He started with Falcon 1, which was a miserable failure. Falcon 2, Falcon 3, they all failed. They went up in the sky and they, they crashed. Falcon 4 is where they um, really got uh, the rocket into space and, you know, got the attention of NASA. There were a lot of, uh, you know, they show Senate hearings where, you know, your former astronauts, including Neil Armstrong, comes and they testify that, you know, these are startups, they don't have much credibility and they won't be able to transfer for the uh, a new modern American astronauts into space. So Elon Musk proves them wrong. I mean, he's under a lot of pressure. He's almost bankrupt. He has done three uh, launches, but they were failure. But after the fourth, it kickstarts for him. So a lot of his money has gone into it. And that's what I was talking about, guys, initially, that his perseverance and that entrepreneurship, the leadership really is shown here. He's not a guy who's losing cool. At least they don't show it in the uh, documentary. But it is really about, you know, how do you encourage a team? Everyone's relying on some person. So he doesn't give up. He's always mustered for, you know, he's getting this determination and he's very self-motivated. So you almost feel like you're in uh, with Elon Musk. That is another great point about this documentary is that I almost felt I was there next to Elon Musk while he was talking to his team, while the astronauts were there. It makes it so real uh, in spite of it's a, it is a documentary, but you really feel that you're there and your interest is aroused. And so the flashbacks are pretty good. You know, there are points of failures in history where, you know, a space shuttle, when it took off, it uh, blasted, killing everyone inside when space shuttle had to come inside the Earth's um, atmosphere, it crashed, it burned completely. So there are there are good flashbacks. You know, the, the, the director has really made sure that the story flows well. He goes back in time and it gives you that context, that background. And for any person who's not aware of, you know, what American space history is, you immediately will be able to relate to, you know, the drawbacks, what happened back and then what people learn from it and you know go go become better and better so that's really good about it but one thing that you know they show in this is that elon has a belief he thinks that you know he wants to set up a base on the moon he wants to set up a colony in mars but no one seems to be buying that idea you know in spite of these astronauts that have been trained they have been quarantined uh, and now they are going into uh, you know international space station i don't think i saw anyone not even the chief operating officer or the president of spacex believing in that Maybe they do. Maybe the entire company Spaces does believe that. But it was hard to see that no one in the executive team has actually even said that, yes, we will one day colonize Mars. So I don't know why that was there. Maybe the directors didn't catch that bite from these people, but definitely they believe in Elon Musk's vision. But I didn't I didn't see see that anyone else saying that yes tomorrow we're gonna go to mars another thing that a scene that i saw is that how these astronauts uh, quarantine you know they were quarantined with their family no one was in that area they wanted to be free of any diseases or germs or bacteria or anything and also when they're taken aboard the shuttle the kind of security they have to go through there is a separate tesla suv for them people are you know greeting them it is really phenomenal the whole process if you see how from start to the end they're training underwater uh, it is mind blowing. And when these astronauts, when Bob and Douglas were in the International Space Station, that's when they go. They are actually fixing the batteries. Oh my God. I think in the past, I've always felt scared looking at, you know, a blank, you know, space. Douglas talks about it that, you know, if something goes unsuccessful, he could be floating in the space. Just to hear that from an astronaut, I mean, you feel like, wow, this is a very dangerous job. But uh, so many people have gone into, into the space, including 
women astronauts it's a it's really a matter of pride it motivates you motivates the younger generation people who want to work in the space center i remember seeing an operation center uh, girl there is a scene she said that i came as a kid here and i always knew this is what i wanted to do so i think the way the directors have also showed the story it will inspire the future generation to go to mars go to different planets and that day will come so unbelievably simplified but really great way to walk through uh, the story and then elon musk also talks about you know reusable rocket i mean that's how the cost of shipping someone has gone drastically down the rocket that goes up you can reuse that rocket for other missions so that is something that is superb and you know that that explains so a lot of facts were shown here you know what is he really trying to do how does he keep the cost low in addition to that what is the speed of a shuttle when it is when it, when it is in space i didn't know that that it was around 17000 miles per hour you can just imagine something that's flying at 17000 miles per hour we fly in the plane at 300 miles per hour this is 17000 you can just imagine the amount of force that is on your body and how they live their lives in the space station how they sleep they're exercising for 2 hours they how do they go to the bathroom it is mind opening guys to just see this and 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 be inspired i saw a scene where there is a senate hearing and they talk about that a lot of other countries are also catching up with america if america doesn't do much these are some politicians saying they said china is picking up russia is picking up and i thought oh okay you know what i don't know these two countries are the only ones that are going to do a lot after america and then india's name came up and we do know a lot of things are happening in india's uh, uh, space agency as well at, at isro as well so that was good to hear that other countries are going to catch up so america should start doing more so that was there and uh, you know when it comes to elon's personality you know they didn't the director did not shy away from using uh, footages that show his real personality i mean he gets sad he is i've never seen that he was angry maybe he was but they didn't show but he definitely is charismatic he's humorous he's witty in one scene he feels choked uh, you know there was a journalist who asked him how do you feel if you know uh, someone's parent these astronauts who are parents they went up and their kids are waiting for them elon himself has kids and you know he spends a lot of time in his business so he almost choked he didn't have an answer for that so that was i think a uh, a moment where you know you don't come across you know these billionaires that are struggling to answer because it's a difficult question to answer and and sacrifices are made for the betterment of the humanity so i thought that was good and then you know he made a joke about dance someone asked him are you not going to dance and then he said that you know i'm not your dancing puppet i'm going to dance when i'm able to send astronauts to the international space station so that happened on the dragon crew the dragon crew mission number 2 is now sending four people into the space station that was the scene that's where it ended in the documentary so overall guys i think this was definitely a mind opening and a beautiful documentary i definitely would uh, you know recommend watching this with your family I give this 9 out of 10. My personal view on this is that a lot of good things are happening in the world, but it is upon filmmakers like Jimmy Chin and Elizabeth Chai to to capture those things and bring it to the real audience. And I think they did a phenomenal job. The footage was great. I uh, just to feel that you know you were there. These are just normal people. They are just engineers. They are uh, PhDs. They are they have a passion for space and that's why they are there. But no one is less than each other. I mean you could feel that they were not arrogant they were just a normal human beings so i thought this was very well made it was an excellent i watched the entire documentary yesterday so i thought you know i just wanted to be here and um, share my review on this so this documentary is available on netflix guys go ahead watch it and if you have any comments please uh, mention this below also don't forget to subscribe to the channel we work hard to produce this great content for you so other than that this is siddharth kumar signing off and uh, i will see you at the next review so Take care guys, bye bye from Review Magic.